Welcome everyone to the uh, Quilters Guild Museum Collection Gallery and we're just going to have a short talk now by Stuart Hillard um, who is going to talk about his piece in the collection, in the exhibition and Stuart is also the patron of the Quilters Guild so if you want to gather around and, and uh, have a look at the quilt and the, what Stuart's going to um, tell us about it I will hand over to Stuart, thank you Thank you Heather, thank you So, um, first of all, uh, thanks for coming to the show today I mean, it's a beautiful place to be, isn't it? The Festival of Quilts, we love it. Um, I've been coming not for the full 20 years, but I have been quilting since I was, well, I made my first bit of patchwork when I was six, seven years old. And it was with Miss Jenkins at school, at primary school. And um, I remember, you know, she was an old lady then. And, um, and she taught me how to do all kinds of craft, including patchwork. And years later, when I wrote my first book, So Fabulous, I put a dedication in the book to Miss Jenkins because I wanted to say a thank you for how much she'd inspired me. And after the book came out, I thought, I'll see if I can find her. She's probably dead. She was 63. <laughs> so she must have been about 21 when she was my teacher, but I thought she was an old lady because I was only little. Anyway, but I've been quilting my whole life. Um, but I started designing and writing for magazines about 11 years ago. And this quilt right here is called Birds in the Cornfield. And um, this was my first ever cover quilt on a magazine. And I'll tell you the story of how this came about. So I used to be an exercise to music teacher in gyms and health clubs and village halls and you name it. And I used to love going to the gym and doing all that kind of thing. Well, I went one day and when I got there, I didn't really feel like exercising, but I did feel like going for a cappuccino and a piece of carrot cake in the cafe. I did that instead. And I discovered that I liked that more than exercising. So, so when I'd finished my cake, I don't know if I was inspired by the colours or what, but I started drawing this quilt on it, literally on a napkin. And um, as soon as I'd finished drawing it, I couldn't wait to get home and start making it. And I, and I pulled the fabrics from my stash and I started making it that afternoon. And, um, you know, I wasn't making it specifically for a magazine. I made it because it's everything I love about a quilt. I love piecing, I love applique, I love quilting the quilt. I love these kinds of fabrics. Um, I had a very dear friend who sadly is no longer with us, but she and I used to meet up at quilt shows and we would go shopping together for sludge. And that was what we affectionately called these fabrics. We love a bit of sludge, we used to say to each other. So we'd go looking for sludgy fabrics. Anyway, I made this quilt and I wasn't sure. Um, I wanted a border to go around it where this black polka dot is. I wanted some kind of border to go around. And I remember going to a very big quilting shop, very big quilting shop. They are here. No, I won't tell you. And I said, so I took the quilt top in and I said, I want some, I want a black print. Because I think once you start putting black in quilts, you really start to get some amazing, like daring effects. And it's all, it adds a bit of drama. The lady in the shop said, oh, that's going to look very drab. I said, that's the look I'm going for. So I got that fabric, took it home, finished off the quilt. Anyway, once it was finished, I emailed the editor at Popular Patchwork magazine and I said, well, here's my latest. Are you interested? And she said, oh, yeah, that's lovely. She said, will you take a quick picture of it and send it to my email? So I took a quick picture on my phone, threw it on the bed, took a picture, sent it off. And about three months later, the magazine came out. And not only was this quilt on the front cover, but it was the photograph I'd taken on my phone, which made it on the front cover. There was no extra money for the photograph. Anyway, literally a couple of months later, I 
applied to go on the Great British Sewing Bee, the very first series of the Great British Sewing Bee. And one of the auditions, I had to take something that I had made. Well, I had to take three things I'd made. Two of them had to be clothing. One of them could be something else. Well, the clothing, I couldn't have cared less. You know, I think one of the things was from Marks and Spencers. That's a joke. Um, but the thing I was really proud of was this quilt, Birds in the Cornfield. So I put that in a special bag and I actually laminated the front cover of the magazine. I'm not sure what I thought they were going to do with it, but I laminated it just in case. And I took it because I thought, who else applying for this show is going to have had something they made on the front cover of a magazine? So I took it down to London. Well, when I got through to the audition room, there was the shirt I'd made on a mannequin. There was the jacket I'd made on a mannequin. And I'm looking for the quilt, you know, my proudest thing. Couldn't see it. it, was nowhere to be seen. And then I looked under the table and it was still in the carrier bag that I'd brought it in under the table. So I said, oh, let me get the quilt out. And they said, oh, we'll get to the quilt. We'll get to the quilt. Tell us about the shirt. So I told them about the shirt. They said, tell us about the jacket. So I told them about the jacket, $49.99 at Marks. It wasn't. Anyway. And I said, should I show you the quilt? They said, oh, no, we'll get to the quilt. We'll get to the quilt. The quilt never came out of the bag. They weren't interested. And I was devastated. I thought this was my thing. Anyway, I went off home and, you know, the, the, the rest, as they say, is history. I did the show and I, I've had, since I've had lots of lovely, lovely opportunities and experiences. Um, this quilt is so special to me for many reasons. It's a quilt that absolutely embodies what I love about quilting. Those sludgy fabrics, the piecing, the applique, the quilt. I love every single step of the quilting process. There's nothing I don't like apart from piecing the backings. I don't like doing that. It's too much like making curtains and I definitely don't do that. Um, but it's everything I love. It was my first ever cover quilt and it made me and my mum and dad so proud. My mum had to have a lie down. She went all Maureen Lipman, you know, oi, you've got an ology. You know, she got very excited. We all got very excited about a front cover. And, um, and actually that being on the front cover was the thing that gave me the courage not to apply for the sewing bee, but to pursue my love of quilting and maybe a career in quilting. And it really spurred me on. Um, I, some years ago, I was asked to take part in the um, Talking Quilts project that the Quilters Guild ran where they wanted to talk to quilt makers about a quilt that they'd made, I think while they were still alive, to tell the story. So it was recorded and transcribed, and it's a resource that will be kept forever by our Quilters Guild. And this is why it's so important that if you're not already a member of the Quilters Guild, that you join. It's £48 for a year. It's less than a pound a week. And it means that exhibitions like this can be done and our archive can be kept, our quilting history and our heritage, which we're so proud of, can be not just kept and preserved, but displayed, enjoyed, celebrated, learned from and provide the inspiration that perhaps it was never meant to, but that it does. So please support our guild, won't you, and join the Quilters Guild. That was my spiel as patron. <laughs> Anyway, so, so, so I took part in that and then last year the Guild approached me and asked me if they could acquire one of my quilts for their permanent collection. To, to my shame, but this is who I am, the first question I asked was why in, why in the world do you want a quilt from me? You know, but we all play our part, don't we? And I couldn't be prouder um, to play a part, a small part, we all play a part in our quilting legacy right now that we're making. So they said, well, you must choose a quilt to go in the collection. This is my most precious quilt that I've ever made. 
It's not the best quilt I've ever made, but it is my most precious. So how could I pick any other quilt than my most precious quilt that I've, that I've ever made? So I, I couldn't be more thrilled that this is part of the Guild's permanent collection. And then shortly after, the Guild asked me to be patron, which essentially is a cheerleader for our Quilters Guild. I hope they made a good choice in me. I definitely am a cheerleader. Um, and I'm very, very happy to be here today just to talk about this quilt. And if anybody's got any questions that they'd like to ask, then please do. Before you ask, yes, Patrick Grant is lovely and it's really nice being And someone asked me today, actually, what does he smell like? I said cheese and onion crisps. He doesn't. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, please. When did I master machine quilting? Still learning, <laughs> still learning. You know, I think every part of the process, everything I do, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to improve. When I went to my very first quilting class, it was from a brilliant teacher called Liz Cornish. She's from the Midlands, and I did my classes at the Midland Arts Centre in Birmingham, at the MAC, you know? Some of you may know in, in Moseley. And Liz, I did my little beginner patchwork sampler, you know, back to basics, rotary cutting, all that. And when I'd got it all layered up, it's only about this big. And um, I said, so what do I do now? And everyone said, oh, you have, to, you have to machine quilt it. I said, okay, how do I do that? And I was presented with two choices, right? There were two choices and that was it. Number one, put on a walking foot and quilt in the ditch. My second choice was to do vermicelli all over. They were the two, because that's free motion quilting. So that's what I was told. You can do in the ditch or you can do vermicelli. There is nothing else, okay? So I was like, okay, so this, this, this sounds interesting, okay. So we left it at that. It was the end of the day. I took my quilt sandwich home and I got home and I quilted the vermicelli line all over the quilt. And I took it back because that's what I've been told to do. And I'm a good boy. So I went back the following week with the quilt and everybody in the class said, how did you do that? And I said, what do you mean? You told me how to do it last week. You said I had to do a wiggly line and none of the lines had to cross. But everyone said, yeah, but how did you do that? And I said, what do you mean? And they said, well, you've, you've done it. You've done it right. And I said, well, what was the alternative? And they all said, but it's really hard. And I said to them, yeah, but you didn't tell me it was hard. <laughs> and so it wasn't, you know? And I, I taught machine quilting for many, many years. I called it free motion quilting for the terrified. Because most of my students would arrive terrified of quilting their quilts. But I remember once I had two ladies come to a class and um, they were lovely, jolly, jolly pair, great friends. And, um, and I was asking a few questions at the start about, you know, why are you here? What's your experience? Now, when I got to them, they said, oh, we've, we've never done quilting before. I said, all right. So I said, do you do like loads of patchwork? Have you got loads of tops that you've never quilted? And they said, no, 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 we've never done any of that before. I said, have you ever done any sewing before? And they said, no, <laughs> that's why we're here. And I, and shame on me, my heart sank a little bit. And I thought, this is going to be hard. And I shouldn't have thought that really, should I? Because do you know what? Every single thing I asked those two ladies to do, they just went, oh, OK. Because I hadn't told them it was hard and neither had anybody else. So I thought, isn't that an interesting one, huh? So yeah, I'm still mastering it. Who knows? If I live long enough, I'm, I'll get there one day, maybe, maybe. Any other questions? There was a question over here. How long did it take? Yeah? How long did this take? She got bored, she left. <laughs> um, I think I made all of the, I made all of the patchwork and the applique blocks. I think I made them over about two weeks. Because when I start a project, that is it. The blinkers are on. I'm not doing anything else. I do one project at a time. I know. Shoot me. Um, 
Yeah. And then I had my trip to the shop. I got my uh, drab border fabric and then I finished it off. And the machine quilting, I spent four days, about eight hours a day machine quilting it on my domestic sewing machine. So I reckon about three weeks in total. But you know, like all day, all day, yeah. But now for TV, a lot of the time, the quilts I make, I take between about sort of 18 and 12 hours, sorry, eight and 12 hours on a, on a quilt top, you know, quilted. For, for a show, for example. So now I have to do them very fast, but they don't look like that. Any other questions? Listen, thank you ever so much for coming and listening to me gabble on. And if you're not already, do join our Quilters Guild. Like I say, it costs less than a pound a week. You are supporting amazing work and it's, it's preserving our heritage now, our present and our future. So I, so I can't recommend it highly enough. Thank you for coming along. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.